Hi guys! So as you can tell by my crazy bluish gray eyes and this puffy sleeve shirt, today we're going to do a makeup transformation inspired by Miss Peregrine from the Tim Burton film Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, also an adaptation of the amazing novel by Ransom Riggs. If you haven't heard of this series, it's one of my all-time favorites and I'm obsessed with Tim Burton so I had to do this. The author created this book by finding random pictures and making a story about it. This video is also a collaboration with Tasha from YouTube.com, Only In Your Mind. She did her version of The Hollow Gas, which came out pretty awesome. The links to that will be down below. You can check it out after or before this video. One of my favorite villains from this movie that wraps its tentacle mouth around other people and kills them, unfortunately. But we are going to be doing Miss Peregrine today, who is an awesome headmistress of the school of the home for peculiar children who have all special powers and that go through time loops. Miss Peregrine can also turn into a bird in the movie. She tries to save these children's lives and she could time travel and has so many awesome special powers, just like all these children in the movie. So we're going to do a two-parter makeup of Miss Peregrine, who is played by Eva Green. And in the second part, we're gonna make her up as she's transforming into the bird midway through on part of her face. So I'm so excited to do this. We'll see how this turns out. First, I'm gonna put a wig cap on because Miss Peregrine in the movie has a awesome blue black short wig. And I want to make sure everything's secured down with bobby pins. Then I'm using some of my cellar water to make sure my face is very, very squeaky clean and there's no residue or makeup on it. Using some orange corrector under my eyes to get rid of them under eye bags and some green corrector to correct the redness and pimples and spots on my face. Then I'm going to get a beauty blender to blend all that out before using some foundation. I'm just using the oval brush on my face to put down some foundation. This brush is amazing, but I wouldn't use it on another person with clients because your fingers do get in the way. And I'm using some cream concealer to make sure that my under eye circles are covered up, but I don't want them brightened or highlighted or baked. I'm going to put some powder on my under eyes and on my laugh lines because I tend to crease there as well. Now I'm just getting a contour cream palette. This is by Poise Cosmetics. You can use any cream palette you want. But I'm using a light contour color that's kind of cool toned and ashy to contour the bridge of my nose because Eva Green, who plays Miss Peregrine in this movie, she has a very more structured nose than I do and it's a lot longer. So I'm giving the illusion of a thinner, longer nose. And I'm going to contour the outer corner of my eye. This is going to make my eyelids look more hooded because Eva Green has a more very dramatic eyebrow in this movie. And I want to bring some notice and drama to those eyes. Then I'm going to contour the sides of my face with the same contour color and the sides of my head. Miss Peregrine in this movie has a very much longer forehead than I do, so I'm contouring the sides of my face to make my forehead look longer, as weird as that sounds. And I'm contouring the bottom of my chin. Eva Green in this movie has a butt chin and a very much shorter chin than I do. Mine's a little more triangle than hers. So with contour colors, I'm just hiding that and making a whole new chin. I also put some concealer on my lips because her lips are a lot smaller than hers. Many of the population's lips are a lot smaller than mine. I haven't had lip filler, but they're just large and in charge. And I'm contouring my nose a little bit more, putting in some more darker, warm tone contour colors to really make it more defined and straight and longer. You really want to look at reference pictures when you're doing noses on other celebrities or people you're trying to transform into because the nose makes it look like them all that much more. Now I'm powdering my entire face because we only have our under eyes powdered at the moment. Skipping highlighter this time and I want to go straight to blush. I'm using a mauve tone blush and I want it very concentrated meaning it's going to be in one specific place on my cheek and not disperse all over like most modern day blush is because Miss Peregrine most of the time resides in the 1940s. Now I'm just getting my Benefit Hula Bronzer to contour more on the sides of my face because Eva Green has a much more slender face than I do. Now it's time to move on to her eyebrows. Miss Peregrine, played by Eva Green, she has some very bold, dramatic eyebrows and they're very shaped. I'm using a brow pencil at first to lay down the shape of it. In between, I'm also using a powdered brow color. This is just a cheap one by NYX. 
any brow color as long as it's lighter than her black hair wig that's going to go on later. You want something that's a mid-tone brown and you could go back and do precise brow hairs back with your brow pencil. And once you think your brows are laid, we are going to get some eyeshadow primer before moving on to the eyeshadow of Miss Peregrine. I'm using the Sephora Overcast Filter Palette and I'm using a taupe color from the palette and you want to lay that down on your eyelid to have a definite winged eyeliner effect. For being a bird, Miss Peregrine has definitely winged out eyes with her eyeshadow and we are bringing that down to our lower lash line as well. Getting some matte black eyeshadow from our palette and doing the outer corners to make it more defined. You most definitely want to look at reference pictures for this part of your eyes to make sure the eyeshadow is detailed enough. Adding on to that cat eye, we are gonna get some black coal eyeliner pencil to line the waterline, that skin that you don't really wanna to touch with makeup, but you have to because we don't want it to be a skin tone color. We want it to blend into her eye to make it look more defined and more like a bird, especially when we move on to this liquid black liner that makes it definitely more cat eyed effect. It has this pointy part of the eyelid that's in your inner tear duct. It's gonna be very pointy like a bird. Birds always look like they have beautiful eyeliner on and that's what you wanna to do to this character. She has a small cat liner and an even bigger inner corner liner line where that tear duct is. Getting the coal black eyeliner again and smudging the bottom of your bottom lid to make sure that the waterline and that bottom eyeshadow blends nicely. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other eye. I absolutely love Eva Green, Miss Peregrine's eye makeup in this movie. It is so dramatic, sultry, and kind of sexy. And she plays such an awesome character that kicks butt, like I said, which is very odd because in the book, Miss Peregrine was a lot more matronly in the book. But it's cool that they put this awesome twist on it and Ranson Riggs, who's the author of the original book, approves. Once you think your eyeliner is on point and looks cat-eyed or bird-like enough, we are gonna prep our eyes for some eyelashes. Curling our original natural eyelashes and then getting some more natural eyelashes from Eyelure. Any brand is fine as long as they look natural. Miss Peregrine doesn't have fluffy, dramatic eyelashes. I'm sure you could put some on her because she has dramatic eyeshadow but I'm just putting on these more natural eyelashes on top of my lid skin on my eye. This is always the most difficult part of makeup, in my opinion. And then I'm getting this matte nude type color lipstick with a lip brush to make my lips look a little smaller in a different shape. I tried to make my lips look smaller at first, but then it just didn't work out and I just painted the whole entire lip. It's hard for me to get those thin lips because I feel like putting concealer to reshape your lips can often look very odd. So yeah, I'm leaving my natural lip shape. Now it's time to do some freckles. I'm just using alcohol paints here, but you can use any type of cream makeup very lightly with a very thin brush. Eva Green has freckles on her forehead. I don't know if that's a way to make her look older in the movie because Miss Peregrine's a lot older in the book, but she definitely has freckles on her forehead. I did one on her neck. And once you think your makeup looks on point to Miss Peregrine's, it is time to get that wig. This wig is so cute and adorable. It's black with blue stripes. It was very hard for me to find, but it's so cool and unique. And with that, we are completely done with our Miss Peregrine makeup from Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children from the Tim Burton film adaptation of it. She's a lot more younger, kicks more butt with crossbows, but she still turns into a bird. So now if you want to stick around for the second part of this makeup, we could slightly be turning into a bird and morphing into it. So we're going to move on to that by taking away some of our makeup on the portion of her face that is the side that you usually paint with. Since I'm right-handed, I took a portion of my makeup away from the right side of my face, around my eye area, to my cheekbone, all the way up to my hairline. And I'm gonna use some aqua paints in light gray to start doing feather-like motions on my cheeks and on my brow area, all the way down the bridge of my nose and doing a little beak section straight down my nose. I'm getting some blue aqua paint to paint on in between the gray marks as well. Since Miss Peregrine in the movie is more of a blue tone bird, but she's also black, in mid-transformation she's more black when her wings turn black and she's turning from human into bird. So we're gonna do more of a black tone bird with very small hints of blue because it's, again, mid-transformation. It very much flows with her hair more and her outfit. 
So I'm getting some black aqua paint next and painting next to my hairline and on the top of my eyelid. Getting a thicker, more opaque black paint. This is by Wolf Brothers. And just going over that, I'm starting to look like the black swan when Natalie Portman played in that movie. But you want to make sure you do feather-like motions and really study pictures of birds. It depends on which way you want the feathers to go, upwards, towards your face. You really, again, want to have a reference picture of a bird. It's almost impossible to find the exact bird from Miss Peregrine's movie. And I want to make sure I have a piece of dark black paint on my nostril or above it and the side of my nose where the beak stops. But I'm just making sure that the black feather lines also stop at the center of my face and they kind of fade into my original beauty makeup. Doing feather-like motions very lightly on your cheekbone. You want to make feather-like motions under your eye as well with that black paint. Getting an even thinner paintbrush and doing more detail with the black paint across the face. Again, I'm covering most of the blue because this is going to be her during her mid-transformation when she starts off with those giant black wings. And in the book, I'm pretty sure that Miss Peregrine actually transformed into a black bird and not a blue bird like she does in the movie. But that's just me being a book snob. Sometimes it's almost going to look like bear-like fur, but it definitely has that bird-like quality with the eye and this amazing contact lens and the beak near the center of your nose. That's like a half of a beak. If you feel like you have too much black paint in your design of your bird on the side of your face, you could definitely wait for that black paint to completely dry before moving on to a light gray paint or a blue paint to make more feather marks of different colors because again, it starts off a little bit black and then she turns into a more darker blue bird. You can also definitely paint your ear black for this to make sure that the human skin on that side of the face doesn't show all the way near your wig. I don't know why it bugged me, but I painted it black. But once you think you have enough bird feathers painted on that portion of your face, you're completely done with this Miss Peregrine makeup of her transforming into partial bird from the movie from Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Like I said, I'm such a huge fan of this book, movie, and series. I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup. I've been obsessed with Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children's novels, and I'm so excited that Tim Burton picked this up. And like I said before, this video is in collaboration with Tasha from YouTube.com, Only In Your Mind. You should check out her awesome hollow gas makeup, her version of it, with the tentacles coming from her mouth. It is so amazing. Links to that will be down below. But sadly, it is time for me to turn back into myself and not an awesome bird headmistress of a school. I just have to say the costume I used in this video was one of the worst costumes I've ever worn and it ripped almost completely during the video and it was ripped before even when I opened it up. It's very cheaply made. I'll put the links to everything I use in this video down below, but I would not suggest this costume. If you guys do this makeup or any makeups that I've done on my YouTube channel, please post on Instagram and tag me hashtag catsketch. Thank you so much to my friend Tasha again for collaborating with me and being such a great sport and this was so much fun to do with her. You can subscribe to this channel for more makeup transformations to come even before Halloween and year round. And I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.